Hi, I am convinced that the environment is the most important thing in the world. Because without its health and well-being, how can we have healthy society? And without healthy society, how can we have healthy economy? I am afraid that by prioritizing the economy and society at the expense of the environment, we are on a dangerous slippery slope. At the same time, I am not surprised that we are on a slippery slope. Because the idea to care for the environment is relatively new. Now, in this video, I would like to share three theoretical frameworks that deal with these complex issues of attitudes and values. And I'm curious, does any of these frameworks reflect our modern society, do you think? And is any of these frameworks good for engaging with people? Let's do it! Hi, I'm Jan from sustainablebutterflies.com.au. We are on a mission to make Australian educational and care organizations sustainable and improve their carbon footprint. The link to our website is in the description below. Now, the first theoretical framework is called the Free Nested Dependencies Model. And in my opinion, it's just an acknowledgement of reality. Because without healthy environment, such as healthy air, water, plenty of plants, plenty of food, resources, but also healthy carrying capacity of the earth providing everything else that we depend on, we wouldn't be able to have healthy society and also relatively content and peaceful society. And without that, we can't build healthy economy. Now, you might just brush this off as common sense. Okay, if you think this is common sense, I want to ask you this. Has it been common practice? Now, the second theoretical framework is also free nested dependencies model. But there is a big difference. They are inverted. And the economy, and in early stages religion, we'll get to that in a second, has been seen as the dominant foundation for our society, which has been then seen as, if there is space left for environment, as the foundation for caring for the environment. Now, how did we come to this from the common sense one, of course, I need healthy environment, to, to the artificial one, which in my opinion is still dominant. How did we get here? Now, to answer that, I believe we need to start with religion. About 2000 years ago, the Western religion, I'm not going to talk about Eastern religion, the Western religion came up with the idea of God giving humans dominion over land, resources, plants, fish, everything, right? And it is our moral right, because we are chosen by God, to kind of, as long as we follow the commandments and the script, to do as we please with it and multiply as we please, etc., etc., right? The idea of afterlife, heaven and angels. So as long as I follow the rules, right, the script, it doesn't really matter, and don't sin, it doesn't really matter that much what's happening during my lifetime, because it all happens after, right? So our, I'm aspiring to be up there with angels, with God in heaven, right? And if I believe if we grew up conditioned over generations thinking this, right, no wonder that we're not concerned with the matters of the, the earth and water, whether it's resources or animals or plants or anything, because we're aspiring to be up there. Now, in the 18th century, there were three key events that were responsible, in my opinion, for this dominant framework. And it started with the Industrial Revolution in the UK. For the first time in human history, people started working away from their homes in factories, so away from their little workshops or from fields or from homes. Adam Smith published his Wealth of Nations, which laid the foundations for modern economics, with ideas like invisible hand of the market and monetary theory. And the Enlightenment movement, which pushed for science, reason and state, as opposed to faith, religion and absolute monarchy, which were all gradually replaced. Well, not so gradually during the French Revolution. And again, where does the environment come into place? It doesn't. It's either a resource to be exploited or an enemy to be conquered. And no wonder, in the 18th century, 
the population was only around one billion and there were vast territories to explore and conquer and so many resources. Now the third period which has been shaping this current dominant framework started after the Second World War with the rise of the United States and also relative peace after the Second World War and institutions such as WTO, IMF and idea of neoliberalism. In my opinion, this only turbocharged what's been happening since the 18th century and hence more reason, more state and more science as opposed to what used to be the case. And where is the environment in the equation? Well, nowhere. In fact, it wasn't until the 1960s when Rachel Carson published her book Silent Spring and then the following authors published Limits of Growth and the term sustainable development was only coined in 1987. So it's only two generations ago where we are actually aware of the problems that arise from this framework which we are in currently. So no wonder that not everyone is on board yet, that we are not there yet. Now, the final theoretical framework is called the triple bottom line. I often use this framework with my clients, most of whom are educators or teachers. Now, its strength is that it assumes that when you have equal distribution of the economy, the environment and society, where they intersect, that's what we call sustainable and that's what we should be doing. So you can approach everyone, because not everyone is greeny, some people value more money, some people it's all about people and nothing else, and with this it's kind of useful, so that's why I use it. Now, however, its limitation is that it assumes still that the economy and society are independent and that we have choice to integrate the environment into the equation if we want to and clearly for the reasons we explained before we don't it's not independent we are physically geophysically dependent on the health and well-being of the environment and without it we can't have the others and these are a subset of the main one but the main environmental one is not going to resonate with all audiences, at least not in the beginning. So that's why I like to use this one. Now, this is the end. And if you watch until the end, I'm really fortunate to have you as my viewer. I really appreciate your time. We are sustainable butterflies, you. And who are we doing this for? For the environment, surprise, surprise. Future generations, plants, animals, including butterflies. You have a great day.